Did we get him? I, I think we got him. Finally, after five whole seasons of anime, 276 episodes chasing this one Pikachu across Kanto, Johto, and the Orange Islands, we finally got him. That's a lot of episodes, Dan. I think it's worth a celebration. Can we do the thing, please? Can we? Yes, I think we can do the thing. Yeah! Prepare for trouble. And make it double. To protect the world from devastation. To unite all peoples within our nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to the stars above. Matt Pat. Dan. Team theorist blasts off at the speed of light. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Meow. That's a really weak Pikachu. You two bozos realize he's only level 40. What? But how can it be? We've covered nearly 300 episodes. And five movies. I don't know. Maybe things pick up in the next 300. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the level 99 pain in the butt to any developers out there that don't think through the details of their fictional universe. Case in point, the Pokemon anime. Last episode, we were presented with a problem. Season 14, episode one, the start of the black and white arc. Pikachu is pitted against a trainer's brand new level five Snivy and loses. And not just loses, after landing one blow, Pikachu gets hit twice by Snivy and faints. It is a blowout and it is absurd. At this point in the series, Ash's Adventures have covered 600 episodes and 13 movies. They've been across five regions with a grand total of 52 badges. Like, it should not be physically possible for that loss to have occurred. Literally running the numbers, it should not have happened. And so last time, we started off on an impossible mission, actually calculating Pikachu's real level at the time of the Snivy battle to show how impossible Pikachu's defeat here would be. And yeah, sure, mechanics don't fully translate over into the anime, anime, etc, etc, but we can roughly translate what we know from the games into the anime to get a general sense of how strong Pikachu should be at this point in his adventure. But in order to do that, we had to watch the show. Literally every episode front to back, because guess what friends? Prior to our research, there was no full and complete list of every battle Pikachu fights in the anime. Well, as our bleeding eyes can attest to, there is now. Long story short, I never want to watch Brock awkwardly leering at women ever again. Last episode, we were able to get up through the end of the joke. Arc. At the start of season 6, 276 episodes in, Pikachu was standing at a shockingly low level of 40. But when you actually look at the data, it makes sense. What we found while watching was that he doesn't fight as much as he might think in the anime. Sure, Pikachu regularly blasts off Team Rocket, but for engaging in actual battles against other mons that can give him experience, Pikachu averages between 20 and 25 fights per arc, which isn't a whole lot relative to the number of episodes. Instead, he's usually side line for whatever shiny new Pokemon the anime wants to promote from that generation, giving him limited opportunities to actually get stronger. So just how powerful is Pikachu? Well, we've got another 324 episodes and 8 movies to cover, and I am determined that this will not be a three-parter, so let's just get going. So, so much more. Always. You don't have to rub it in, theme of Pokemon Advanced. You don't have to rub it in. As we get started, a few quick Reminders. To find the experience of battling Pokemon, if they're wild, I'm taking the route they're on and using the median level number for that route. For trainer battles, I'm instead using the mean level or average level for all the trainers on that route, adding them all up and then dividing by the number of trainers. With gym leaders and Team Rocket appearances, I'm just using the level of those Pokemon directly from the games. Here's the equation we're putting all that information into, which I went into in much greater detail last time. And lastly, we're taking Pikachu's total experience and finding the cube root because Pikachu is part of the medium fast EXP category. And if you have any questions about battles or the facts and figures that I use, a link to the full document is in the description below this video, right next to that subscribe button, go figure. Which, if you haven't pushed yet, you probably should, because let's face it, no other person on Earth is gonna take such a dumb question so seriously. And you clicked on the video, so clearly you're at least moderately interested in getting the answers to these sorts of things. So come on, join the community of theorists already. 46% of you aren't subscribed, right? Isn't that the thing I'm supposed to say? Which brings us 
us to the next stop on our journey, Hoenn. And this is where things really get interesting. You see, there's a theory online written by Reddit user Joe's Cool that claims that Pikachu's level resets at the start of every other region, not including the Orange Islands. To quote from that original theory, in the final Johto episode Hoenn Alone, James fires up a giant magnet which causes a bunch of stuff to come up and whack Ash, knocking him out. In addition, Pikachu gets trapped onto the magnet and his electricity is drained. These two events cause Ash to lose part of his memory and Pikachu to lose the power it gained through its journey. This explains why Ash and Pikachu seem to reset. They both get caught up in an accident that seriously hurts them. And this is a great theory that explains a lot. Or at least it would be if the episodes didn't directly contradict all of it. And again, I know this because I gotta watch them all to do the theory. Sure, we see Pikachu get overcharged at the end of Johto. Pikachu! But the very next episode, the start of Hoenn, we're told multiple times that Pikachu is able to recover back to his normal state. Pikachu's output is incredible! It appears that Pikachu's electricity pressure has reached normal levels. And all this is without even mentioning the fact that Ash's memory seems completely unaffected by all of it. A similar thing happens in In the Shadow of Zekrom, the first episode of the Black and White series. In this episode, Pikachu and Ash get caught up in a thundercloud, and Pikachu gets overloaded by electricity from Zekrom. Pikachu is completely enveloped inside a power powerful electric field. All that electrical energy Pikachu absorbed from the thunderstorm was too much. And that would explain why Pikachu's not able to use any electric type moves. And while it does certainly seem to hamper him temporarily, Pikachu's level again doesn't actually reset, as even without electricity, he's still able to use advanced moves like Iron Tail that, as we see earlier in the anime, Pikachu had trouble actually learning. It's also worth noting that Pikachu fully recovers one episode later, and also also Pikachu getting overcharged is a very common occurrence throughout the series, with no long-term consequences to his power levels. Anyway, all that's to say that there isn't solid evidence of levels getting reset here. Plus, it would ruin the fun of figuring out what the big number is at the end of this thing. So, Hoenn, the playable region from Ruby, Sapphire, and later, Emerald. This region spans four whole seasons of the anime, and Ash returns to using Pikachu as his primary Pokémon, which means a lot more battles for him. Things start off simple enough, just a basic journey following along the path of the games, but midway through, things things get a little funny as Season 8 shifts to follow more closely with Pokemon Emerald in order to coincide with that game's release. You can tell this in Season 8 Episode 18 with the introduction of Juan, who's the 8th gym leader in Emerald as opposed to Wallace from Ruby and Sapphire. The anime also includes the Battle Frontier, which is only present in Pokemon Emerald. In the end, there were 47 total victories in the region for Pikachu, nearly double any of the previous arcs. Rather than read all that information out, which would be dumb and long and tedious and no one wants to hear it, I'm just gonna list them here with the episode number, route, and level. Yeah told you there was a lot. And like I said, the Google Doc will be linked down in the description below, so if you really want to dig in, you can find all the information down there. Anyway, the main place to stop is right about... Meow. This is where Ash goes to the Battle Frontier and faces off against the Frontier Brains. Now, how the Battle Frontier works in Pokemon Emerald is that there are two categories of gameplay, Level 50 and Open Level. Level 50 is the first class for Pokemon Level 50 or below, and all the opponent Pokemon will be at Level 50 themselves, whereas Open Level means any Pokemon over level 50 can enter, and the opponent's Pokemon will match your highest level Pokemon. Fortunately for us, at this point in the series, Pikachu actually caps in at 47, so he only qualifies for the level 50 mode, meaning that all the Frontier Brain Pokemon are gonna level at 50. I love it when things just work out. After beating the Brains, he only gains himself one level, and so Pikachu finishes off the Hoenn region at level 48. Next up, Sinnoh, and this region. <laughs> this region. Hoenn was a breeze, nothing complicated, easy to follow, but I knew it was too good to be true. Sinnoh was determined to break me. Another four season region, another 49 battles, which you can see here. But the worst part, the worst, worst part was Team Rocket. Curse you, Jesse and James. In the immortal words of Markiplier, it's big brain time. So the first Pokemon Pikachu encounters in the Sinnoh region is Dawn's new Piplup. That's easy enough, it's level five, all starter Pokemon are. However, in that first episode, Pikachu also 
also encounters Meowth, Mime Jr., and Wobbuffet from Team Rocket. He of course makes quick work of them, but the issue is that we have very little to go on for the levels. Mime Jr. is probably the least complicated, as we see him use the move Mimic in Episode 17 of Season 9. We also know that move-based evolution is considered important within the Pokemon anime universe, as later in Diamond and Pearl, Apom learns Double Hit and soon after evolves into Ambipom. So even though time has passed since Mime Jr. used Mimic, he can't have leveled up, otherwise he would have evolved into Mr. Mime. Meaning Mime Jr. here in this battle is sitting at level 32. Wobbuffet's a little harder to figure out, but we know that he was traded back on Route 34 of the Johto region, which would have made him at about level 11. So going on the idea that he's traveled two regions and taken into account Pikachu's level gain, I put him at level 40. The hardest in this instance, though, is Meowth. Last time we saw him lose a battle was in Kanto, where I estimated his level to be 31. It would be safe to assume that he grew at the same rate as Arbok and Weezing until they were released, which means by this point I've estimated Meowth to be level 70, which I know seems high, but once again, it's not gonna make all that big of a difference in the final tally. The last anomaly in this region is the battle tower that Ash partakes in during his time back in Twinleaf Town, episode 36 of season 12. The battle tower in Diamond and Pearl is slightly different to the battle frontier in that the only option is level 50, with all Pokemon being dropped to that level in your party regardless of their actual level. As this throws off a lot of calculations, I instead opted for the open level approach from the Battle Frontier, making his opponents the same level as Pikachu, which at this point is 58. And now, we're finally here. After Pikachu fights a few more Pokemon, we are finally in the Unova region. This is once again where the series tries to do a soft reboot by trying to make Ash and Pikachu seem like a new team. However, we know that this is absolutely 100% not true. Ash retains all of his memories of the journey thus far. When Dawn rejoins the team, we get this interaction. And later, when Dawn specifically asks about Brock cooking for her and Ash on the journey, We also know that Pikachu retains all the moves that he's learned up to this point, like Iron Tail, which a new Pokemon trainer is unlikely to have taught a brand new Pikachu. Even the show only half-heartedly adheres to its own reboot, as in that very same episode we get this. Hard to say Pikachu reverted back to level 5 when he's actively being called the world's most powerful Pikachu. So, with all that being said, it means we're here. We finally arrived at that big final number. Pikachu's level in his battle against Snivy. What is he? Level 90? 100? 200? We'll strap in because that number is, after compiling all 148 Pikachu battles across 600 plus episodes and doing really elaborate calculations to get there, drumroll please. Pikachu's final level is... 61. Kinda underwhelming, right? Like, he's traversed five whole regions. Most people are getting close to that level after doing a single run through a game. Even if you didn't like some of my estimations for Team Rocket battles, if we remove them entirely from the equation, it would still only put Pikachu at level 59. Any way you slice it, he's not as powerful as we all think he should be. I've seen forums of people online saying it must be 100. If the levels went over 100, he'd be like 1,000 at this point. But having sat down and painstaking scrubbed through all the episodes looking for every tiny detail, I can tell you definitively that that is not the case. He is like low 60s at best. So what's that mean for our battle against Snivy? Long story short, Snivy still should have been toast. As I mentioned at the start, Pikachu is the first to land a hit with a successful quick attack. To give Snivy the best, best possible chance, we're gonna assume that this is just the buffest level 5 you could possibly get, with an HP of 21 and defense of 12. And let's also say that Pikachu is my lower estimate of level 59. At that level, the lowest Pikachu's attack stat could be is 69, with Quick Attack's base power being 40 and the randomizer feature set to its lowest setting of 0.85, we can use the in-game equations to figure out that Pikachu's attack would do 95 damage, and 21 Snivy HP minus 95 damage equals negative 74. Snivy could be knocked out three more times with just that one hit. And to really round it off, let's just say that somehow Snivy did 
survive the quick attack. When it goes on the offensive, its attack and special attack stats are both 11. Pikachu's lowest possible stats here would be HP 110, defense 52, special defense 64. Let's also say the randomizer hits at its highest point, and both attacks are critical hits for Snivy. With Tackle having a base power of 50 and Leaf Tornado being 65, the most total damage that could be done would be 32 hit points. Pikachu would still have 78 HP remaining. So where does all this leave us? Well, I did it. I calculated what level Pikachu is, a task that no sane person has ever completed. I feel amazing and also very, very empty. This show is just painfully repetitive. Anyway, kudos to you, Ash. Sure, you lost against Snivy. You don't know that you have to weaken a Pokemon before catching it, and you didn't realize that bug Pokemon are weak against flying types, but you've managed to win against the Elite Four using a Pokemon that's half their level, and that's gotta account for something. So maybe you are better than everyone gives you credit for. Trico! So is it a water type? No, Ash, it's a grass type. Never mind, still an idiot. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.